<laughs> what just happened, Frankie? Uh, so we got we got another winner in the Keymaster. All right, guys. So uh, today. We have a pretty cool buyout, some good stuff here. I want to specifically go over something that I feel like is lacking in this industry. All right, Frankie, fit check. Um, I'm starting at the top. I don't remember. I don't remember what I had. Um, all, right, all right, statement. Uh, statement on the hat. Statement. Chrome inspired trucker. We don't sell these, by the way. I always like to say that. Uh, chrome, actual chrome. T. Uh, essentials. This is the eggshell colorway sweatpants. Uh, supreme, supreme on the boxes, of course, always. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm on a bargo for us with the uh, cream laces from Slicky's Laces. Boom. Way better. Fire. Cream laces. Um, Spence, give me the camera because we need the year for the check. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'm All not right. so good at this. The... All right, Spence, what you got on? No, I'm just kidding. All right, Spence, <laughs> come back. Spence. All right, what you got on? Uh, we got the plain black Nike hat. Uh huh. Classic. Uh, Easy. Statement T. Yes, right? sir. Mm -hmm. um, Olive color. Repping the uh, Club Lax. Okay. Shout out SJU. Shout him out. Um, and then my crusty, my daily. What? What are those? <laughs> All right, those, those, are, those are the cameraman ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, come on. Think, come on. What you got on? What you got can on, I bro? Just pass like from here on out on this thing. No, you can't pass. This is part of the. He needs to watch this video at the end. Hemp, Air Max ones. That's about it. Okay, that's not. <laughs> I mean, you have other clothes on. Some black pants and a car hard hoodie. Okay. Okay. That's is that that hard? You want to opt out with no participation trophy? I mean, roast stink in the comments, please. Same fit every day. <laughs> <laughs> he replaced the JR. <laughs> Let's see. Where's everyone else? Where's everyone else? Aha! We would catch me in. All right. This is a. Uh, yeah, we need a fit check, bro. <laughs> I got the doo-doo essentials on. No, uh, well the rain drum, right? The doo-doo. Okay, you don't have to call it the doo-doo. Rain drums. Statement sweatpants. Comfies. About three-year-old slides. Yeezy slides. Big. Oh! Ooh! Oh, mine, mine, mine kind of rolled down. Same ones though. Food check. But food check. Let me eat my pasta. That's not pasta, bro. Show me your pasta. I'm not from here anymore. Cup noodles. Ooh. Who, but he doesn't need to have the cup. It's not cup noodles, it's bowl noodles. Did you add anything into the bowl noodles? What'd you add? What's the seasoning? Salt, pepper. Uh huh. Oregano. All right, rest time. Thumb this. We gotta do a fit checker. Easy on it. Okay. Hit him with it. Nothing too crazy today. We got the statement friends and family chrome heart. Uh huh. Okay. We got a statement hoodie. Always. Friends and family as well. Um, just some plain Levi jeans and Whew. got the little panda pigeon dunks. Okay, okay. What socks you got on? Some regular uh, pair of socks? Just okay, because I thought, I thought he had the bape socks on too with us. Because me and Bailey have matched the matching bape socks on. <laughs> but, fire pair. I need a pair of those still. All right. Where's, uh, who we got missing? Brandon. We need Brandon. He's hiding. Brandon is hiding. He knows he's getting it today. I'm not showing you my pasta. How do we miss him? I don't know. He was probably hiding in the back of his friend. You know what time is? We got to do the fit check. Talk to right. start from the top. Statement everything per well, usual. Start from the top. Statement hoodie. Start from the top. Essentials. What's on the dome? Come on. What's on the hat? Hair. Hair. Okay. We just got the cut. I see. Yep. Who cut it? Super cut. That's a three Super out of ten. Cut. Super other is? Super. No. <laughs> But uh, yep, statement hoodie, central. Uh -huh. The Maha logo. Statement sweatpants, uh -huh. per use. We got the orange SBs. Okay. S13. Don't worry about the rolling. Bro. Chill out, chill out, real quick. Whoo! Chill, chill, chill. Right, right, call you know, day. Call, it's a calm day, it's a calm day. Only 30,000 on his wrist, you know, something mm. like, something like. <laughs> Alright, guys, so uh, today we have a pretty cool buyout. Uh, some good stuff here. He is a returning customer, and he's bought a ton off us. He sold a ton of us. Uh, I don't know if we had. Did we vlog that last? Yeah, time? we had him on the YouTube channel. He was on the channel. Hat. Yeah, the the Sean hat. He sold uh, Billy, uh, a Billy Sean Witherspoon hat that he really liked for the match the the sneakers. So he's traveled all the way here to King of Prussia to do another uh, another cash out, and these might be my size. Uh, my other pair, I forget what size they are, but if these fit, these might have to be for the toe. It's close. I love the pink. They look good. The pink, are, the pink is fire. The pink is fire. 
Might have to tow these. Might have to tow these. Let's see how what, what kind of deal we work in it. Word. These cheeks. These lot nines are crazy. I love the orange with the with the pink. I just think they it flows well with the gray. I could do without the, the green here, but can't win them all. It, it is what it is. I do have to collect all the lots, so I have said that on like the previous YouTube that I would collect all the lots. I haven't even I got like one or two pairs. Really slacked on that. Uh, then here we got Dead Stock Burberry box logo, fire. Another uh, recent release, the crew neck, the gray with the black, good colorway, really good colorway. And we got, ooh, these are, I love these too. These ones, they have like the little glow in the dark, like spiders and stuff like that on it. Really dope, really dope. Got Supreme hat. I use the Burberry. The Bur uh, you know what I like about the Burberry box logo? It's, it's just printed, it's not stitched. If it was stitched, it'd be way different, but that would be really hard to stitch. Veneers. Safety deposit box. These are the uh, like new like boot type, right? Yeah, I passed on those and then you pass on these? Yeah. They all want these. I think I want good. No, I'm not saying for me. I'm saying for the store. I mean, I would rock them though. I think these are cool. And then the shocks. Yeah, these ones, they're all yeah, right. We can pass these ones. Okay, so Billy will be giving up some pricing. These are dope, though. Good stuff. You really want that off it? Yeah, I do. I'll put it in there. Besides, I got 12. The bottom's a little bit dark on these two, right? Yeah, I think, uh, oh, this one was good. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, what's it called? Like, all the stuff around. This thing's dead? Yeah, rats. I'm gonna get another one. Alright, so if you guys don't know, um, black light really like helps with uh, any kind of uh, glow in the dark. It, like really makes it pop. So you see like the eyes on the back, glow in the dark, all this like I said spiders and just all kind of spookiness going on. Hold it for a couple seconds and it be predominant. Pretty freaking sick. Soul too, glows in the dark, so the whole bottom. You know, I mean this this shoe at night, you know, is Alright, crazy. This black light's also like me. Some eyes over here. I like these little spooky eyes. <laughs> Tom has a really crazy video of me because we just finished our cameras on the, in the back and um, I forgot that the cameras were there and I was in the back twerking. <laughs> and Tom clipped it and I think it's sending it to Spencer. So hopefully he doesn't make it to this vlog. <laughs> He, I go back there, he goes, he just hits play, he goes, yes sir, and I'm back there like. <laughs> I, can't even, me. I can't even hold the camera still. <laughs> <laughs> Wrecked me, bro. You gotta see the video, man. It's going in the vlog, don't worry. No, great. Sick, thanks guys. If that doesn't deserve a thumbs up, I don't know what does. Frank exposes himself on camera. <laughs> Absolutely. Alright, so what do we Yeah, I have all the prices right now. Uh, you got it. So, oh, okay. yeah, I was asking about the uh, the Travis SBs when you're sitting on like 23 foot, which is a little high for what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. But they're on Yeah. I understand. Yes. Um, so I would take the 90s um, and the 12. Um, and what would you offer for cash? So, so well, I don't know. You, you want to do it? Or? I'm going to give him his total. I okay. broke it down from the total 7 All right, I'll look at the Air Max. So that's correct. Okay. So the Air Max would be nine, so then you could walk away with it, eight fifty five. Gotcha. Yeah. And the Air Max nine. Gotcha. Yeah, that'll work. So the, the Air Max nine is what's the total? Eight fifty five cash. Okay, so eight fifty five we and okay, cool. You mind if I look at them again before no, we swap all out? No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he'll grab it. Can you grab the what's it called? Yeah, I'm grabbing the display one right now. Alright, then fire Brandon. <laughs> hey man, thank you so much. I appreciate you. <laughs> what just happened, Frankie? Uh so we got we got another winner in the keymaster. Uh right here. What size is it? Oh you get it safer. Yeah, what size? Six. Six. 
¿De hombre? Ocho. Size six. He's size six. No way. Eh? Ocho. No. Ocho. He's size eight. Eight, okay, okay. He thinks he's in Mexico, bro. Eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so size eight. Uh, I'm going to see if I have one. If, uh, if I have one, he, he gets that one. If not, he can take this one or he can take a cash out option. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I'll double check. Let All me check right, right now for a size eight. How many times did he try? Uh, maybe, um, Five times? Five times? Five? That's yeah. good. That's pretty good. Five times? Five dollars. <laughs> let's get into this video. Let's uh, let's get into talking about the whole point of this video when we decided. Uh, I think we are going to do a key master. So if you guys stay and watch this whole video, I think it's going to be a good one today. It is Saturday, so for you guys to judge. Um, so there's a good amount of people in the store uh, at the time of filming this. So let's go on the back. Let's get a little privacy. Yo, what up, what up, guys? Fingertip right here from Statement and the King of Prussia Mall. Today, I want to specifically go over something that I feel like is lacking in this industry. And I feel like a lot of people can learn something out of it, uh, whether you're a store owner or whether you are just a reseller. So, kind of jumping right into this, I'm going to go over the store side of things. So, if you're a store owner uh, or you want to be a store owner, you're working your way to be a store owner, you're a reseller and stuff, I want to go over some consignment things. I think a lot of these things are common sense, but I guess common sense is not so common anymore. Because a lot of these things are kind of like... Uh, I just see it. I see it in every, every, almost every store. Drawing people to stop consigning and you know, kind of totally get out of the game because of bad experiences, and that's that's a shame. You know, this should be a game of love, and if some people love it to make money, then cool, that's good for them. But one of the main things that I see that consignment stores are doing that I just find a shame is uh, one, prices. They kind of let everyone pick their own price, even if it's on the same shoe, kind of undercutting all the time. So when I walk in a store, the last thing I want to see is this zebra going for uh, you know, 350, 320. 380 you know and the prices are all over the place uh, on the same exact shoe just because you have three or four different consigners same size or even if it's not same size even if you have you know one's a size four one size seven one size 12 you know i understand that their that prices should change but you know most of the stuff that we have here is kind of like all around the same when they're in the same size range you know if grade school size go for more which is fine then you know keep it as grade school size going for more and leave them all around the same the same price if not the, the same price as opposed to like the men's size you know don't have a size eight one price and a size nine a crazy different price. That doesn't really work like that. I understand like sometimes when you go on these other you know, websites like StockX or Go and like a size nine is this price and size 10 is you know crazy difference in price. Normally that's BS. It's not really always like that. It's because hey, there's no more out there and there's none for sale. So someone wanted to be a weenie and just throw it up for 10x the price we know what they go for a size 8 and a size 9 are not going to go for that much of a difference in price some very 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 rare shoes being different you know you know so I, I think that needs to stop in this industry I think that's a little I think that's a little crazy for sneaker stores to be doing that um, secondly and most most embarrassing out of every anything I could possibly say is paying your consigners how, how are you guys selling all these sneakers and then a consigner hits you up and, and you know and needs his check or whatever the case may be or if you're not doing your checks weeklies or bi-weeklies this is on your store and what you discussed with your consigner or consignee i should say now they should always be ready to, to you know if it's if you have your day set to fridays every friday they should be able to go there and they should be able to pick up their check and they should be able to cash their check i'm hearing from a lot of people which is mind-blowing to me that they go to some some of these stores and they don't have their check they don't have That's their money fire. shots are definitely fired tom get what are you doing? Look at you, can you, what are you doing? Yeah. Shots fired, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> Shots are definitely fired. Y'all stores gotta stop this, man. Um, you know, a lot of my employees, they can sign at other stores. We're not gonna throw anyone on the bus, but like, I, I, it's kind of funny because I, I, so some of you guys that are store owners that are watching this video are probably thinking, oh, they're talking about us. Yeah, we probably are. Because it's probably all of you store owners that are doing this and it's such a shame. I can't believe how often I hear this. How, how are people coming after you sold their shoes? That means you have made the money. And if you don't have their money then, what does that mean? That means that you spent their money. Money that you shouldn't have been spending. You know, and as a store owner, let me give you some advice. And I don't, we don't need to do this here. But I think some of you guys might be able to manage your money a little bit better if you did do this. I think your consignment stuff, your consignment money should go in a separate bank account. And the store items should go in their bank account. Because... You should never be spent overspending money. You should never be spending consigners' money on on your on your inventory. You're already making a percentage off their stuff. That's great. That's good. Now you can spend that percentage on that stuff, but to overspend and spend their money and them not being able to cash their checks is embarrassing. I can't believe how many people like want to pull their stuff out of other consignment stores, bring it here, and what even my employees tell me because they consign at other stores. They're like, yeah, man, I went to this place and they didn't have my check. What? What do you mean they didn't have your check? It's, you haven't been there since, you know, three weeks, four weeks. 
Yeah, I, oh, they told me this, this, and this, this, this old. Well, where's the money? Oh, well, they said I have to wait a couple weeks. That's crazy to me. You guys got to stop that. You guys should manage money. I understand this is kind of an easy business for, for your first business to start up with, but um, you got to manage your money, right? If you can't manage $1,000, you can't manage a million dollars. So if you want to get to that point, you got to start getting that intact, you know? And you want to call that shots fired, you can. You want to take it however you want to take it, you can, but you guys should be on top of your own money, especially someone else's money that you're supposed to be liable for. So um, don't take that really as a dig. I would kind of take that as some advice. You guys should be doing better than that. Um, another thing for the store owners, um, I think, now I know communication is really hard with your consignees, um, and I'm not telling you like always text them and tell them when something's sold, stuff like that. I think that is, that's too much. And consignees, even though this isn't your part yet, don't expect that from, from these stores. Let them do what they gotta do. Don't ride them, don't be on them all the time. I think that uh, there should be some form of way to tell them what's sold, you know, as far as like lists of, um, what do you want, Tom? You're creeping over here. You got something to tell them? Just want to add in. Yes. Keep in mind, if you're consigning on... at a store. Wait, no, wait. We're not on that part yet. Oh. We're on, we're on stores. We're speaking from a store side. What should the stores be doing better? And then I'm going to get to the consignees and what the consigners should be doing better. Pairs. That's a big one. Right. Store. Oh, that is a... Sizes? Well, that's a lot on the other side, but yes. Store it's owners. On. Biggest one. Biggest, big, big, big one. Store owners. Legit checking those shoes. When the consigners come in, I don't care if they're Joe Blow with the biggest following and they've brought you 100,000 pairs already and every single one has been good, one might be off. Y'all should be legit checking, because that one is everything. That one is everything. You should, every shoe that comes in, you, the owner, if you're not good at legit checking, you shouldn't be in this business. But secondly, or at least use some kind of outsourced form, two, three people should be looking at it. You guys watch these videos. When we buy, I check them, Billy checks them, Tom checks them, we check every pair. No matter who comes in with it, no matter what the price is, I don't care if it was Nike directly, we check that shoe three times because it could happen. You'd be surprised how much it could happen. So even if you got it at a Foot Locker, it could happen. And I know that sounds crazy, I'm not even gonna go into detail about that, but if you know, you know. So like, it happens, it happens, man. So don't let it, don't let it fall through that crack. So. When consigners are bringing it in, they just drop off. All right, cool. You should still go through every single pair. Make sure it's good. Make sure the sizes are correct. Make sure the boxes are correct. Um, you know, and that kind of goes for both both ends of it. And I'm going to talk about it again on the other side. But make sure the sizes are correct. Make sure that make sure that uh, it's a left and right shoe. Make sure uh, you know there's no tags on it. As far I mean, unless you want to keep a, a StockX tag on it, God bless. But um, I mean, I, I personally like to leave. Flight Club, Stadium Goods, uh, eBay tags on because, you know, that to me that solidifies a little bit more. They're trustworthy places, unlike, you know, StockX. I don't really, I, I have a bad taste when I see a StockX tag on a shoe, regardless, just because of, you know, who they are and what I've seen out of them. And as soon as I see a StockX tag, it's like, eh, a little cringy. It scares me. I just assume fake automatically because one, the fakes come with them, and then honestly, stock just is moving fakes. So that's on them. This is gonna be the last, the last topic for uh, store owners. Um, is changing consignment rates and false promises, which is good. I mean, I, t I totally agree with like, you know, when you're first open, you're, we're gonna kill it, we're gonna kill it, we're gonna crush it, bring us pairs. I understand that. You have high hopes, as you should. Go into it headstrong, get that store open, get them sales made. You know what I mean? That is awesome, and I'm very happy for you guys for doing that. However, giving someone false promises, promises, you gotta stand on that. That's your word, your word is, is you. You should never break that for nobody. That, if that's your word, that's it. You know, so when you have when you go when you have a consigner coming in, you're telling them, we'll give you 5%, we'll give you 10%. That's not sustainable. If you're giving a 10% consignment rate so that they can sign with you instead, one, if I was a consigner, and I've been in this game for a while, and I've obviously been through every alley of this game, one that's going to tell, okay, you guys aren't clearly making sales like that if you have such a low consignment rate. I'd rather go to a store with a higher consignment rate I know is turning over because they know the game already. If, you're, if you have a 10% consignment rate, your credit card fees roughly average 3%. So now, now you're only making 7%, right? On whatever pair that this is. And now you have rent and all this other stuff. So you mean tell me you're gonna be able to sustain a store on, on like seven, 5%? No shot. The amount of money that you have to turn to have that little of a consignment rate, it's just no shot. And especially when you tell them, oh, if you bring X amount of pairs, you get less whack like that's it's not gonna work just because they bring x amount of pairs like now it's different if you're dealing with a higher end shoe and you know, if you got someone bringing in you size runs of travis scott's all right cool you could work with that and that would make a little bit more sense when it's one pair you know it's it, you know because those pairs are su such a high high price so the so the rate becomes a lot more money 
in the matter of a small amounts, you know, or a big amounts, I should say. So, if you know you have a you know a two thousand dollars shoe at twenty percent, that's a, a big amount, as opposed to like a three hundred dollar dunk at at twenty percent is isn't that serious of an amount, you know. So it's it, you can give or take with with the, with the higher end stuff if they're bringing in a lot, but I still wouldn't. I would kind of keep it the same all across the board and not change it because that's kind of what it should be, um, you know. And at a higher value shoe with that percentage, they have to put it up so much more to then compensate for the price that it, that you could sell it at in the store without being over overly overpriced, realistically. Um, so I think yeah, those false promises got to go. I think the whole consignment rate changing. If you said it, you say you stand on it. You know, don't don't slightly change it up because you're learning business. Learn this before you get into business. Stop signing those leases uh, on on stores and malls and you know uh, your brick and mortars without knowing what you're doing. Going into go into it with some education. Don't figure it out. I mean, yeah, there's just a lot of stuff we figure out along the way. But you should have more knowledge than that. You know, so stop giving out the false promises. Stop stop promising they're gonna sell. You know, sell hundreds of pairs for this guy a month. It's most likely not true, especially if you have multiple consigners. Um, and also stop stop with the fake consignment rate. Stop saying ten percent, and then not, and then slowly moving up to twenty. Within when I say slowly, I mean a three month basis. But you know, have your consignment rate ready. You know, add up all your fees. What's what's sustainable? What can we do that we're still making money? So if not, you're just losing money. You know, no one wants to be in this business to lose money, especially with breaking points. If you're in a mall, you know, if your breaking point is X amount of percent and it doesn't cover the percentage that you're making on consignment, you're going under. You're gonna be you're at a loss. Yeah, you know, you're not gonna be in business long. You know, I guess this is the last. Uh, the last thing because you see this a lot in stores stop the flexing man like i understand like you know it, it's okay to spoil yourself it is, is most of the time i would hope your money um but you see everybody going out and buy these crazy all this jewelry all these cars at this point i can almost do a starter pack for sneaker store owners you know and i mean we're kind of victim of stuff me you know me and tom bought iced out rolexes you know stuff like that but at the same time as we also didn't take a pay that year you know so there's a little bit of a difference and you know, and nowadays it seems like okay, cool car, cool, cool uh, Rolex, cool this or Tesla, whatever the case may be. The, you guys buy all this stuff so quick to flex on the gram, and then right after that, after the after you hit all these points, it's like okay, and then it goes under. You don't see you don't see the the constant revolving door there. You know of of you know buying this 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 and then all designer stuff and then going under. Now there is some stores that do it and do it right, and that's why why you guys are following it. Um, and shout out to the, to those guys, and y'all know who you are. But, you know, most of, most of these stores, you know, like, you shouldn't, within your first year, you should not be going out and buying exotic stuff, straight up. You should be building this business. You know, if you want to last five years, you can't spend everything on the first. Common sense. I shouldn't even have to explain this to you. This is child's play at this point. Um, you know, you guys are flexing way too much. Um, you know, it, it might seem like we're flexing, but I promise you, we are not flexing by any, by any means, you know. There, respectfully yeah I mean I think all this false flexing man gets you really buried quick and that's anything in life I shouldn't even have to talk about this um, stop that stop stop doing all that because you see how it goes and then you go right under you just hear stories about that I guess so with that being said for all those things that I have listed and I'll make Spencer list them on the screen here um, for those reasons as a sneaker store owner that's something we got to change it's something we got to do better with you know especially me being a, uh, a owner, I would like to help you guys too. I hope these things are, are helpful for you. I hope you don't take it as digs or jabs or anything like that. I hope that really is helpful for you. Now, let's get moving forward. Let's get to the other side of this. The demon, the devil, the consigner side of this. So you guys as resellers, um, now some of you guys are awesome and truly, you know, especially when you have a business background and you know a little bit about business, some of the best consigners out there, you know. We don't do too much consignment here. Uh, but there is a handful of things that I do want to go over to the consigners of what you guys should do better, what you should look look towards, look forward to, um, <clears throat> what to do better as a consigner for the store, a couple of different things. So first things first, I'm going to touch on this first only because it's simple, it's easy, and we talked about it previously just a little bit ago, um, is make sure you check your pairs. Obviously, legit check your pairs, make sure the sizing is right. You know, I don't care where you ordered it from, you could have got it off off sneakers and you never even opened the box. Open that box, check it, make sure you got both left and right, you got the sizes, everything like that. I mean, that's standard. Secondly, don't don't ride your con your consignment store. Don't hit them up every day, yo, does anything sell? You know, don't ride them and don't ask them all the time. You know, if they have a set day that you're supposed to get paid, to go in there to get paid is when you should do it. You know, you don't call them every day, you don't text them, does anything sell, did this sell? Is You know, now I can understand um, maybe calling them on the day that they 
that that they're that you're supposed to have checks there and ask them hey is my check ready i guess that's kind of acceptable um but realistically me when i was a consigner and i was in that stage i would go the next day if checks were done on friday cool i'm showing up on a saturday because i know it should be done there should be no reason why it's not done whether they were busy that day or not they should be done by the next day Another thing would be, and this is this is a big one, and this is a big one for me in my opinion. I hope I shed some light on this so you guys understand, is support your local stores. And why I say that is because if you can sign, right? If you can sign with me, you should be commenting on our posts. You should be sharing our posts. You should be watching our YouTube. You should be sharing our YouTube. I understand a lot of this is for the money for you guys. I truly do, and you can care less about the culture, but why wouldn't you want to see that store do better? If you're selling X amount of pairs in that store, you don't want to see it go down. You want you should be supporting it, right? You're making money. Let's make money together. So you should you should be supportive of what they do, you know. And they should, you know, you should you should help them grow as a team. Okay, this store is growing, and and now they're getting you know their average sales went up from a thousand dollars a day, two thousand a day, three thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand dollars a day. And how do you get there? Social media, you know, getting seen, getting heard, being liked, you know. So all that stuff has a huge role you have no idea how much of a role that plays of them knowing you know we still have people come into our store after years of being open people will come in your store and be like i had no idea this store existed here damn like that's crazy you know so um like i said sharing word of mouth you know the 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 comments the sh the the likes subscribing stuff like that if you already if you're already you know at this store you should support it you really should you should you should be and i'm not just saying us i'm saying any store that you can sign with i'm not this isn't like a oh my god please go like my video that's not what this is this is you should just if you're doing business with someone and you want them to do more in sales so you do better yourself that's a good way to start you know one hand should always wash the other in this business um another one would be be mindful of the inventory that stores have fill the gaps you know and stores will love this stores will not be mad at you for this i'm telling you right now if you go on a store's website and every store should have a website to check inventory i hope you do if you don't it is what it is but if you go on their website and you're like okay they have you know size five six seven eight and a half you should be filling those gaps where's the five and a half where's the six and a half so don't go for the same size that they have at some point they're going to need that size so try to fill in those gaps you're going to make more sales they're going to make more sales they're going to have every size win 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 all around right i understand that some size might sell more but when that size is needed and they don't have it who makes a sale nobody so you could fill that gap filling the gap is everything you know brandon and stuff when he was consigning with us before he actually worked for us he would study our website literally and this is kind of why we hired him like i said he's a great employee he's a great consigner he would constantly look at our website and fill gaps and that's awesome like he would be like oh, okay they don't have a size this let me bring one in or they don't have, you know, he's commenting on all our videos. He did all that stuff, you know? So that was one of the main reasons we hired that blender. He's a weenie, especially if you're watching this. Like, come on, you already know what I'm gonna say. I'm gonna look at your eyes, you know what I'm gonna say. But anyway, uh, inside joke between me and Brandon. So yeah, I think uh, I think you guys should be filling gaps. It's gonna make you more money. When you go in and there's 10 of the same size, they're not gonna, they're gonna be like, what are you doing with this, dude? You know, I would try to go for older stuff. Stuff that is still highly desired, highly wanted. You know, everyone has your generic stuff that's recent release. If I go online, I say looking for. Um, if I say I go, if I go on there and say, hey, I'm looking for panda dunks. Everyone and their mother has them for me. Panda dunks by the boatload. You know, if I go and say the newest Jordan One, the day like Lawson Fouts. Matter of fact, the Jordan Twos. That's a more recent release. Chicago Twos when they came out. You know, if I go, hey, looking for Chicago. Everyone has them. You guys are trying to consign them. It's like everyone has them. Go for it. Yeah, I understand that it's going to be a good seller. Yes, it is going to be. It's going to be a good seller. Stores should be on it. Stores should have pairs already. You know, so as soon as they come out, stores should be ready to have pairs ready to go for sale. If you have a thing with them that you guys have them first, cool. It's great to be first. But at the same time, is people are still looking for mochas. People are still looking for military blacks. But so people, are, you know, there's other skews that you could be on top of. Be different. Be different in this game. You know, buy the high end stuff. I understand it might take a little longer to sell, but at least you're going to get sales. It's easier to squeeze in a, a place that, that, that has room than to try to squeeze in where there's no room in there. You know, it's too packed. It's oversaturated, all this new stuff. Another thing, guys, be patient when you drop shoes off for when they're selling. I'm going to uh, take a dig at Saucy because it's kind of funny story. And it's a multiple story. Like, this happens all the time. Still to this day happens. Saucy is so impatient with consigning to the point that Saucy would hit on a raffle or whatever. And Saucy comes to bring a shoe in. He doesn't want to consign it because it's going to take long to sell. And so Brandon buys it, other like our other employee Brandon, and then consigns it in the store. Brandon sells it later that day. <laughs> and it's happened to Saucy like, 
since Cherry Hill. I couldn't even tell you how many times this happens, this Aussie. Like he literally, he buys a shoe, sells it to Brandon, Brandon consigns it, it sells that same day. Now he could, instead of waiting and getting like $100 more, he just sells it to Brandon. And Brandon just takes advantage of it all the time. And we tell him, we're like, Saucy, what are you doing? Like, just wait for it to sell. Like, you literally, it's not even five minutes. Like, you've had this shoe. Crazy. Real Mickey Mouse reseller. And finally, Brandon convinces him to, he has a Why So Sad Dunk. We'll put it on the screen here. A Why So Sad Dunk. He goes to sell it. Or, or, he goes to sell it to Brandon. Brandon says, why don't you just consign it? Finally, he consigns it. It sells that day. That same day that he gets it, it sells. He tells Brandon, he goes... <laughs> You want to give me 210 now and then you get the 250 when when I get my check? Like that's crazy. You guys got to be patient. You know, it, it stuff does sell. It will sell. You know, so don't be afraid to buy the weird skews and don't be uh don't be afraid to wait, you know? Like don't expect it to sell same day. You know, if you need 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 that money, you probably shouldn't be in this business. You probably shouldn't be, you know, unless unless you have a buyer. If you're consigning, you're going to go, you know, selling instantly is a different story. If you're selling right now, cool. You make little margins, little money and get it now and then if you can sign you're going for the big the long haul you know we're gonna make the most profit but you know it's gonna take a little longer it's kind of like push pull you know yeah with that being said man i hope you guys learned something whether you're a consignee or consigner i hope that this taught you well if you guys have any questions or if there's a topic that i didn't touch on or something that you think should have been in this video please drop it below in the comments so anyway guys drop a comment below let me know what you think about this uh store owners consigners i hope you guys are reselling I uh, hope you guys are doing well with it. I hope you guys are uh, finding grails, all that stuff. I hope everything is working out for you in this buy, sell, trade world. If you guys have any questions, I'm always here to help. I try to, I try to answer as many times as possible. I always try to answer you guys in the comments. Uh, so just ask me, you know, if you guys need help, if you guys need advice. I'm always trying to help. But thank you guys for watching, especially if you watch this whole video. I understand it's going to be a little long. Drop like a, <laughs> drop a elephant in the comments or something like that let me know you watch this whole thing because that's really cool and i think that's pretty special for me to go and make this content you guys watch it all um so kind of like it if you know you know <laughs> matt people are gonna be saying elephant in the comments that'd be dope but anyway guys thank you again as always like share subscribe hit that bell i'll see you guys in the next one yeah, so if you watch our videos you know what this is uh this is our key master game um and basically if you're new to the channel what we do is we take all the money out and we show you guys, we kind of just put it on the table and let you guys get a quick view of it. And then you guys can guess in the comments how much it is. If you guess it right exactly on the head, you win it. Whether it's Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, Apple Pay, you want to come to the store and grab a cash, whatever, you win it. It's all yours. Um, but you have to watch the next video to see who the winner is. So drop a comment when you see the amount. And uh, yeah, good luck. <laughs> It's gonna be a lot today. It looks decent, it looks decent. Let's see if I can get it all out in one, one shot. Oh, there's a couple more bills in there, so hold on, let me uh, bring this over here. As you see, a couple more dollars in here. Fives, tens, twenties, just shoot a hundred dollar bill could be in here. You don't know, this is all you get, this is what you get, you get to guess with. Um, so good luck. Now, did you guys see my outfit? You see what it is. Um, in the next video, somewhere in the beginning of the video, we will post, uh, you'll see me actually counting it exactly and telling you guys the total and you guys will find out if you guys won then. So good luck on the guessing guys. Thanks for watching.